Okay, this is the setup I've put together in order to test the inverter and our new EG4 LL Series 2 battery. So I went ahead and put Anderson plugs on the input of the inverter and the output of the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug those in. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the inverter's serial cable to the battery since these can communicate in a close. This is the cable that the inverter comes with. The part that says EG4 goes to the battery, this goes to the inverter. If you do it backwards, there'll be no communication. And I will show you on the display how you know if it's communicating. Because if you don't do this, this is gonna go into some sort of fail safe mode until you take it out of that. Because out of the box, this comes set up to run with one of their server rack batteries. So you just plug this guy into the lithium ion port. Okay, so the inverter's plugged in, the serial cable's connected. Now we're gonna go ahead and flip the breaker on. Now we're going to go ahead and turn the battery on and wait for the LCD screen to come on. So here you go. The LCD screen tells you several important things. It tells you the state of the battery as in the charge, discharge, or standby. So because we're not pulling or pushing power, it's in standby mode. You get the total voltage of the pack. You get the current going in or out, and you get the state of charge. And then when you work your way through these menus... You can look at all your individual cell voltages just to make sure you don't have any problems there. There's 1 through 9 and 10 through 16. And then you can also see the temperature of the actual BMS as well as the cell temperatures with all different temperature probes. So that's pretty cool. That's really all you can see with this display. Nothing else crazy like that. And then the display auto powers down after a few seconds. So now we got the battery turned on. It also gives you your state of charge and all that stuff here. This part was tricky to me because I was having it not communicate at first. So I did set this to 1. But the manual for the battery and the manual for the inverter, the inverter still has the manual for the older style batteries with only four dip switches. And this one has, this one has six dip switches. So I set it like this and that seemed to work. Okay, everything's connected now. So now we're going to go ahead and turn the inverter on. When there's nothing coming in as far as solar or, or AC, you just flip it on with this power button. And this is actually going to turn the whole unit on. Okay, you see how the battery symbol's flashing? That means that we have communication between the inverter and the battery. So as long as you get that, we're good. And you see this little, the little flow of energy saying from the battery to the DC to AC to outlet power, which is on the side right here. So that's the first thing, uh, pretty cool. And yeah, now we're gonna put a load on it and I'll show y'all what everything looks like with it when it has a load on it. Okay, I went and connected our Ego battery charger. This is about a 600, 700 watt charger, so it'll pretty, pretty good load on the system. Not anywhere near what this thing can handle. So if you click the battery display on while we're using it. So now it's showing discharging and it shows you the current leaving the battery and then obviously the state of charge, so that's awesome. So as the battery is being used, it'll tell you charging, discharging, the voltage and how much current. And then if you come over to the inverter, you can also see some information as well. PV1, PV2, which obviously we don't have any solar connected right now. B battery voltage, frequency, load, and there's your uh, VA and then watts. So here's your watts, we're pulling 544 watts. And the neat thing about having this, having internal communication with the cable is you can set this to turn off at whatever state of charge you set for the battery. I think preset, it comes 10%. And there's a lot of different settings in here. You can mess with that, you know, whatever preferences you have. And also because this is capable of serial communication, you can connect multiple of these batteries together. I went ahead and disconnected the load. As you can see, the current dropped to, now that's the idle consumption of the inverter with the inverter turned on. So we're gonna go ahead and click this thing off. When you click this off, it actually puts the whole unit in standby. So the unit will actually kick the inverter off. Then this screen will kick off unless you have solar or AC connected. And as you can see, the inverter just kicked off and it pulls about 0.6 amps just sitting here. So yeah, not too bad. Now I'm gonna go ahead and connect some solar and show you guys it charging with solar. Okay, so I went ahead and plugged the solar in. It's very cloudy outside, so we're not gonna get a whole lot of power. As you can see, we only have 45 watts, half an amp at 90 volts, so not really impressive. This thing, I think I said in the unboxing video, you can do 500 volts per channel and you have two channels. I already have the first one hooked up. I am gonna extend this and make it a little bit longer. And then I have another pigtail I made to connect to another string of solar panels. So with, a, with such a high open circuit voltage, it makes it very easy to add panels to this. And this will do 8,000 watts of solar. So now we have that charging, we can go over the battery. 
Now, because we're only putting 45 watts in, we may only be using the standby consumption of the inverter itself. Yeah, so as you can see, it still shows discharging because we don't really have a whole lot of sun coming in. So that is what it is. And you can see the state of charge right now is about 40%. I've been using it a little bit. Okay, next mode I'm gonna show you guys, and I'm gonna show you guys utility charging mode, and then I'll show you guys the current going into the battery. So this thing is capable of doing 120 amp charge, which is a lot of power. I have it set all the way down to, I believe, eight or 10 amps because I don't need to charge that fast. And also, I don't think I can get that much amperage out of a standard wall outlet that's like 5,000 watts or something crazy. All you have to do to get that to work is you install the incoming AC to a cord and then I just put a end on it. But if you had the inverter turned on, it would do something called bypass mode. So essentially all your loads would switch to the AC going into the machine and it would bypass the actual inverter itself while charging the battery, so that's pretty cool. Also, you can charge the battery with AC current and you can charge it with solar at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in and I'll show you guys that. If you look, we have MPP converting into charging, and we also have line current, which is the wavy one, going through the charger and into the battery. So we're actually charging the battery with two different ways now, and that's freaking awesome. Okay, so as you can see, we are putting 12 amps into the battery, and it says charging. So that's pretty cool. You can see the voltage and all that, and that's it. So now I can charge this. Now I can charge this completely off of AC power, DC power, so now our loads are coming straight from the wall, bypassing the inverter altogether and going straight to the power strip. Well, anyways, guys, that's going to do it for the video for the battery. I also, like I said, I wanted to throw in some features of the inverter itself. The next video, we're actually going to build this into a usable setup that I can actually use. And we're going to start taking advantage of this whole system. So this is my first 48 volt system. I'm very excited. This thing is extremely scalable. You can parallel and series these up to get your split phase and you can parallel those units to get more wattage if you need it. So extremely excited. These are really high quality products. I'm very excited to see what we end up doing with them and see how much life we can get out of them. I mean, they rate this to 7,000 cycles. That's pretty awesome. I think we'll have a lot of years of trouble-free use. Also something to note, this thing is actually UL certified or UL listed and UL certified, I believe. So there's the UL number. And the reason why that's so important is because on certain installations, you need that for the code of whatever area you're using this in. But just to be on that list and become certified, it just kind of tells you how good this battery is, how much redundant safety there's built into it, how reliable it's going to be. So super good to hear, super good to see that. But anyways, guys, I'm kind of rambling now. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. Like I said, the next one, we're gonna go ahead and build our 48 volt system with this. We're also gonna assemble a raw cell 48 volt battery, put it in parallel with this battery and then connect everything to the inverter. And yeah, I guess that's going to do it right now. I appreciate you guys watching my videos. Appreciate all the subscriptions. As always, if you guys have questions or comments, put them down below. And I will get back to you guys, and I will see you all in the next one.